Hey all, welcome to Share Trek, and this is Maha here. Now the fight against HIV, the virus responsible for AIDS, is ongoing, with significant strides being made in the development of vaccines and therapies. One promising approach is the use of a vaccine called ICVAX from a company called Immunocore. Now Immunocore is a biotechnology group which is based in Hong Kong. Science Park, and it focuses on research and development of immunotherapies for cancers, inflammatory and infectious diseases based on its patented PD-1 enhanced DNA vaccine. Today, I'm going to discuss with Raj about this therapy. So Raj, a warm welcome to you. Thank you. For yet another episode of Share Trek HIV. Yes. Yes. So let's get started. So um, what I understand about ICVAX is that Immunocore recently released some findings from the study on ICVAX to understand its potential in providing a functional cure for HIV-1. So let me ask Raj about this. Raj, first of all, what is ICVAX? Yes. Uh, so, Maha, thanks for the nice introduction. And um, uh, I must confess uh, to the readers also, when I uh, looked up this uh, vaccine, uh, I I quickly glanced the name of the company. And in my mind, I was thinking Immunocore because that's a company called Immunocore, which we have been looking at from time to time in the uh, genomic investment channel. And that's a very different company. This is Immunocure. So I made that mistakes. Uh, a few times when I was um, uh, reading the uh, details. But coming back to what is ICVAX, ICVAX is a DNA vaccine uh, designed for clinical use in humans. It combines uh, two advanced strategies to enhance the immune responses. So the first one is the, the PD-1-based dendritic cell targeting where the vaccine uses a part of PD-1 protein fused with HIV-1 antigens and PD-1 naturally inter interacts with PD-L1 and PD-L2 on dendritic cells, which are key to the presentation of uh, antigens to T cells. And this targeting helps in uh, efficiently presenting the HIV-1 antigens uh, to the immune system instead of waiting for the actual HIV virus to be digested by the macrophage and then the antigen presented. So there's a lot of risk in that kind of a process. The entire risk is removed by directly uh, installing these antigens on the uh, macrophages. So that's the way I would uh, say about the first part of the strategy. The second part of the strategy is the use of mosaic antigenic design, where the vaccine includes a bivalent HIV-1 GAG P41 mosaic antigen. So when we use the term mosaic, mosaic means uh, it is designed to cover a broad range of viral strains by including multiple variants of, viral, uh, of the viral proteins. And this approach increases the likelihood of the vaccine inducing an immune response against diverse HIV-1 strains. So that is the second part of it. And um, yeah, so that's how I would summarize at this stage. So another question for you is, does it use an AAV or any other mechanism to deliver the antigens into the body? Yes, so this is a very interesting question and many viewers ask this question. Even for uh, Dr. Eric Art's um, therapy, they were asking about AAV, that it's uh, ineffective. And one of the reasons why is because in this channel, we have been predominantly showcasing uh, gene editing technologies for curing HIV. These are EBT-101, this is the Tel Aviv vaccine, this is the AGT-103-T. So these are the yes. things that we have been talking about. So all of those involved to send CRISPR-Cas9 uh, using a, a delivery mechanism, which is typically AAV or lentiviral or CMV or some other virus like that, which is deactivated, hollowed out, and CRISPR-Cas9 is put in there so that it can go to various parts of the body where it is supposed to go to. But that's not the case in this one. The vaccine utilizes a soluble form of the PD-1 protein fused with HIV-1 antigens. This engineered PD-1 domain targets the vaccine to dendritic cells by binding to the PD-L1 and PDL2 on these cells. Once the dendritic cells or antigen presenting cells get the HIV antigen, they can activate CD8 plus T cells and sensitize them uh, to the HIV antigen. This then unleashes CD8 plus on the multiple HIV strains. 
Also, there is some mechanism between CD4 T cells and CD8 plus T cells, as well as dendritic cells that encourage proliferation of activated CD8 plus T cells. So if you look at uh, PD L1 and L2, they are called programmed death ligand one and programmed death ligand two. These are present in uh, macrophages. So typically after digesting a pathogen, these would uh, PD1 and PD2 on the uh, macrophages will be presenting those um, antigens. So PDL1 okay. ligand and PDL2 ligand, they are counterparts for the PD1 and PD2 on the macrophages, the way I understand it. So what would happen is PDL1 and PDL2 will go and adhere to it. So if you are going to send antigens along with that, then that can be mounted onto the uh, macrophages. Uh, so that it can be presented to the CD8 plus and CD4 T cells to activate them. So that's how uh, I see it. Okay. My next question to you would be, now, can you explain the necessity of vaccine-induced T cell immunity? Uh, yes. Um, uh, for a functional cure of, um, of uh, HIV, or for that matter, any uh, disease, it's crucial to simulate the body's uh, immune system, specifically T cells to recognize and combat virus. CD8 plus cells is a subtype of T cells which play a vital role in controlling HIV-1 by targeting and killing infected cells. So they have the capability to create memory T cells. So these memory T cells for CD8 plus T cells are long-lived cells that can quickly respond to the virus upon re-exposure. How long they live uh, will determine when the booster shot is needed to uh, jump up the immunity once again. Previous studies have shown that uh, inducing these uh, cells can help in controlling simian uh, human immunodeficiency virus or SHIV in uh, animal models. CD8 T cells cannot be infected by HIV, so it can be very effective. The beauty of this approach is that they feed the macrophages with mosaic HIV GP41 antigen, and that in turn activates the CD8 plus T cells. So uh, that's the uh, that's the beauty of it. As I mentioned very early in the in in this um, session, that instead of waiting for the macrophage to actually win a fight against HIV and then present the antigens on its uh, uh, PD uh, one and PD two uh, ligands, uh, we have a situation where we it is being installed there so that CD eight plus T cell can pick it up. So it, in my opinion, it reduces the risk. And again, guys, I'm not a doctor or a scientist. But this is the best understanding I have of the process in which this works. And one of the best thing is that CD8 plus T cells do not have CD4 receptors. So there is no way um, HIV can get a hold of uh, CD8 plus T cell and infect it. Of course, CD8 plus does have CCR5 and CXCR4 co-receptors. But without CD4 receptor, HIV won't get a grip on it. And therefore, uh, the GP120 will not be opened. And so GP41 cannot be exposed. So that's how I would I would put it. Very well explained, Raj. So uh, could you tell me what are the key findings from the study after all? Yeah, so at a high level, I would say that as a generalist, I think uh, as a general uh, lay person, I think the study has been very good. They have given some scientific uh, data and all, which I don't understand very well. Uh, but I'll produce that for you. So basically in mice, the ICVAX vaccine elicited stronger, broader, and more polyfunctional T cell responses compared to non-targeting mosaic GAG P41 vaccine. It also suppressed an HIV-like virus, which is called eco-HIV in mice, and it did that very, very effectively. In macaques, which is a kind of monkey, monkey. the vaccine uh, introduced uh, robust effector memory T cell responses targeting multiple parts of the GAG P41 uh, antigen. And this response was seen even when the vaccine was produced under good manufacturing practices or GMP uh, circumstances, indicating its potential for safe and consistent production for human use. And um, it also showed a lot of clinical potential because the uh, study highlight that, uh, highlighted that ICVAX has the potential to induce broad and effective T cell response against various HIV-1 subtypes. So this opens up new avenues for HIV-1 vaccine design aimed at both prevention and functional cure. And um, importance of the study is that the findings underscore the promise of the PD-1-based DNA vaccine approach by targeting dendritic cells and using mosaic antigens 
ICVAX can potentially provide broad protection and control against HIV-1, addressing the genetic diversity of the virus, which is a major hurdle in vaccine development. And currently, ICVAX is in phase one clinical trial. The more encouraging is the fact that around June 2023, Immunocore announced that it had closed the dollar 12 million tranche in the 27 million Series A fundraising. So for those who are not familiar with fundraising, when a private company gets started, which is what we call as the startup in the startup ecosystem. So the first time they raise funds from investors, it is called Series A. The second time they do it, it's called Series B and so on. And somewhere down the line, the company may decide that now instead of doing uh, private fundraising, we'll go with an IPO or we'll merge with a SPAC, which is what AG, uh, American Gene Technologies did. Uh, in order to go public, which means their shares will start quoting in the market. So this is a startup. It has got 27, uh, 12 million dollars uh, uh, in the Series A uh, fundraising round that it held in the middle of last year. And it is led by AEF, uh, Greater Bay Area Fund, uh, that Gobi partners or GBA managers uh, manages. And this round will be used to accelerate the development of DNA vaccines and antibodies as well as to prepare for an IPO in Hong Kong. So that is the initial public offering in Hong Kong. So this is what in, uh, Immunocore said in a very recent statement two or three days ago. So that gives me optimism that these guys are going to have the money and they have something in the phase one clinical trial. Hopefully they succeed uh, quickly and start getting into the FDA clinical trial system. And we'll see how it goes. So this, this holds a lot of promise, right? So as far as I can see it. Yes. And uh, uh, so far, I mean, I don't know if any in the uh, clinical one trial, um, any side effect or what is the status of the people who have been through the trials? Uh, has there been any kind of a report about that? Uh, no, nothing that I have come across. I know for sure I went to their pipeline section in their uh, website and it shows that they have entered phase one. So they must be in the process of recruiting candidates, uh, human candidates in order to begin dosing them. So we'll oh. find out in due course as they uh, make more press releases and give us Absolutely. more information. Yeah. So, so meanwhile, let's wait for some more uh, comments from our viewers uh, because they are coming up with uh, something or the other and uh, they, they are talking about new cures and uh, it shows how actively they are following this and they are exactly. so much... It's not only about uh, what they're going through, but they, there's so much uh, on the alert about new uh, research and all of that, which is really wonderful to watch. Yeah, I'm amazed because so, I think our, our channel is very strong on HIV. Uh, and um, uh, I think it's one of the best channels on YouTube to give all the information. So we have attracted really high quality subscribers. Earlier, I used to see that in my inbox, like Mr. Majestic, mm. uh, he has done a great contribution to our channel by introducing new topics as well as getting us the interview with Dr. Eric Art. So uh, Mr. was instrumental in that. Then we have Vishal, who also sends a lot of uh, uh, new therapies that uh, he would like to see uh, in the video, in the channel. And then, of course, uh, this ICVAX was also requested by one of our subscribers. So we have some fantastic subscribers. We are growing fast also. We are across 13,000 uh, subscribers. So yes. that's a, yeah, that's a very good one. That's wonderful. Yeah. And uh, on top of that, we are also trying to give some motivational information and some extra information for career development for people who watch our channel and who have. And, and I'm very happy to see one woman who has commented. Yes. I, it was very encouraging to see that, you know. There, yeah, we have very less women in the uh, channel. So it's really nice to see women also taking part and commenting. So Maha, now that we have reached uh, so far uh, towards the end of this, so I think I don't have anything more to talk about in ICVAX. And before we leave, I was wondering, if you have any thoughts or anything you'd like to share with our audience, either relating to uh, image uh, management or um, in terms of motivation or anything like that? You know, there's one thing that we like about our grandmothers, you know. What do you like about your grandmother if you if you can think about her? What is the one thing that uh, grandmothers, being with them, you like something? Yeah, they, it's she one... always used to give me everything I wanted, especially sweets. So... <laughs> Yeah, and I was the first grandson, so she always loved me so much. And so you were very pampered, right? Very pampered, yeah. So all of us have one one memory, uh, a different memory with the, each of our grandmothers, whether maternal side or paternal yeah. side, doesn't matter. We're always pampered by them. Yes. 
the one thing that you like for me grandmothers for two things other than the pampering of course number one is their uh, storytelling abilities oh yes yes oh they would come up with such beautiful stories and uh, number one is that number two is the unke haath ka khana the food that they prepare amazing i think more, many of those foods they become redundant now if i may if i'm using the correct word yeah people no more know how to prepare it so yeah let's uh, you know so, so in, in my stories case, yeah, yeah in my case it was my uh, maternal grandfather who was a wonderful storyteller i used to love him for that my okay. uh, maternal grandmother she was a very wonderful person with great eq she would give me a oh. lot of sweets and also i would love to put my head on her lap and sleep and i was the first <laughs> grandson so i got pampered so as you are saying uh, you were going ahead with yeah yeah own. yeah so yeah so i thought that uh, stories are something you know they say that facts tell but stories sell and uh, people buy stories though i am not uh, using sell as in the business term or money terms or something like that a good story is something that people can resonate with or you know kind of uh, connect with very easily Related. so yeah you know i just saw this i was watching this web series i binge watch at times so there was this web series called made in heaven which is all about a marriage uh, uh, what do you call it they are an event management company so which uh, does predominantly only they arrange for marriages and all those things and they just have to so there is this and every episode is about a different couple so this one which really struck me was about this girl uh jisko bolte hai savli or dusky in uh, you know uh, the the brown skin which we indians have this girl is pretty and the boy loves her and uh, the boy's parents and the girl's mother which was really shocking they are not fond of the dusky skin so much so that it's an arranged it's, marriage is it it's an it's a love marriage love marriage okay it's a love marriage so much so that it is deeply ingrained in the girl's mind that she is not beautiful whereas the guy is trying his best to encourage her and tell her that no it's not like that you're very beautiful you're diff- I mean, on the eve of the marriage the mother takes her to her, one of these salons or uh, treatments you know they do those treatments so the lady there convinces her the manager convinces her that if you do this treatment you will get several shades lighter and the mother is in okay you just go ahead and uh, just do it and all those things and the girl is a little apprehensive she says is it safe for me whether i can do it so the manager tells you know this is done by all bollywood stars and uh, you know it's a, it's the in thing so what do you use you know this is called glutathione which is very good it's a skin lightener and things like that convinces her and as luck would have it this girl breaks into a rash on the eve of the marriage <laughs> and she is she is so sad she's having a, it's say one or two days before the marriage and then she is supposed to have her uh, uh, the the party what is that called the um, engagement party the bachelorette is that yes. is that it the yes. girls have a separate yes yes so she she's not able to attend even that right and uh, the poor girl is crying and the boy comes and he tells her, what have you done bob i mean how did you is it stress or something like that he's coming her he says no i went to the salon and i got the treatment and i broke into this rash right so he is shocked he said you didn't tell me about it why did you do it and yeah. the mother tells her no 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 she's got one or two more sittings let her do it and the boy does nothing doing stop it right now i'm taking you to a doctor you're getting this uh, thing treated yes. that's it no more treatment for you yes and i love you just the way you are why do you have to do it your skin is something which is your usp and you are ashamed of it yes so this girl she yes. suddenly realizes that probably there is something in what she say, uh, he's saying Yeah. and uh, the, everything is you know as they say all is well all all things end happy ends ending. well happy ending and they get married and all of that and there is this person who is um, jisko bolte hai sutradhar who is uh, giving narrator. a commentary yeah. narrator so he tells that uh, 
you know, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all. And uh, he says that we have been brought up, even our fairy tales are talking about this, that fairest, the one who is the fairest is the most beautiful. So fair is attractive, beautiful. Everything which is fair is uh, just great. Anything beyond it is not great. So then what I felt was, and sadly enough, and then the narrator goes on to say that the maximum number of fairness creams are sold in India, in the Indian wow. subcontinent. Wow. It was sad to hear that. Right. And uh, it was shocking. Uh, I, I know for a fact that in South of India, there was this brand which I wouldn't like to name in our channel, it was selling the maximum number of tubes, you know. And thereafter, there was a sudden uh, revolution which happened. And then people started, uh, stars like Priyanka Chopra and all, they, uh, you know, kind of, they said that nothing doing, we are not going to further these brands, even if they are going to come to us, we are not going to be brand ambassadors yes. for this particular brand. So fair is fair and whatever is, we don't want to do it. And uh, now coming back to the story, the story ends where the husband is fast asleep and this woman is before her dressing table uh, sitting there and she's applying the fairness cream once again on her face. It's so deep into her head that she cannot brush off the fact that because she is a particular color, she is not beautiful. How much ever convincing is not going to help her come out of it. But I want to say this, uh, for all our friends here uh, who are living with HIV, that if you think that there is something which is kind of bogging you down, you are wallowing in self-pity. You are within that. There is so much in the world to explore. If you are just going to think that, okay, I am this, I am not, I am, I am unwell, I am like this, I am like that. I mean, you, you are losing out on all the fun. So much is happening outside. And there are, now sometimes what happens is, there are five friends, you know, three of them don't like you. We always sit and talk about those three. We don't talk about the two which we have. So, uh, whether it is friends, whether it is what you have, uh, whether it is your family, you know, kind of revel, celebrate that. And, you know, you all those things which you have, you count them as blessings. Yes. And uh, do not be inside that thing because that is only going to make you more, I feel, and there is a very strong connection between our mind and our body, you know. So there is a, a very beautiful book by Louis Hay called Heal My Life. I'm sure you've read it. I know no, you read no, a lot. I, so. I, have to, I have to check it out. Yeah. I will. Oh, it's a beautiful book. So she says that there is a lot of connection between your mind and the diseases or whatever, dis-ease, she, she partitions those words as dis and ease. So there is a big, the way you think is how your body is going to function and you know, you should not carry that. So right. if you are thinking of healing, if you are thinking of having a good life, if you're going to think of, uh, you know, everything starts with being positive and counting your blessings. So this is this is the moral that I could bring right. out from this particular yeah. story, you know. Nice, interesting thing. And I guess uh, uh, in terms of people with uh, uh, P uh, PLHIV or people living with HIV, those things could be the self-imposed constraint that, okay, because I am HIV positive, uh, I don't want to be prominent. I don't want to be uh, in the limelight and things like that. So those things you can uh, remove, consider them to be a disease and remove the disc Absolutely. and become ease at ease with those kind of situations and go there and do your thing and shine i think that's the message yes, yes. Uh, nice this uh, is what i could learn yeah yes. from that story and... that's nice i hope our viewers enjoyed this video and uh, friends uh, thanks maha for uh, helping me bring out this information and also for your uh, information regarding uh, how to be better uh, and i think we'll bring this video to an end now uh, yes. I, I, I look forward to our viewers um, pressing the like and the subscribe button because it helps the channel grow. And our channel has been growing very well. We are uh, we across the 13K. Now we have to go to 15. 
So I request that please uh, send a link of our video to people uh, who you think should watch this channel and who will benefit from this channel and ask them to subscribe. Tell them that Raj asked you to join the channel. Take care. Bye for now. Thanks, Maha. Bye. Thank you.